Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Knights of the Alternate Table. And in today's video, we're going to continue on the 100 subscriber special for part 2. And I saw some messages on where's part 4 for um, Uprising. That will be coming out this week just because I did a live stream on it, but not a lot of people watched it, so sorry if you missed that. So, yeah, let's get into it. Thank you guys. Where we last left off, it was with Britain landing in Britannia, with Iberia being under middle in trench warfare, as long as Germany and Austria. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the Ottoman Empire would slowly start losing territory in the Balkans, while Greece would still hold on and fight to the last man, so they would never escape. German reunificationists would rise up, seeing as most of the troops would be on the front line, would give them the option to rise up. Under the promise of being a democratic nation and not fighting with Britain, <coughs> Britain would therefore kick Austria out of the Entente powers and leave them to fight, with Austria's only ally staying Bavaria and Poland, who wished to keep their independence. They would quickly try and fight off the French. Brandenburg would be the first place liberated, and they would start continuing on to fight. Meanwhile, the more and more rebellious cells would grow. Britain would lose a couple, little bit of land in Brittany, and Austria and Russia still wouldn't officially declare war on each other yet, though they would be lining up their troops and evacuating to prepare to fight. The German states, besides trying to connect to each other, would now start rebelling, while Belgium would put in plans to start invading to hopefully gain back some of their lost territory. Russia would start hitting Austria hungry hard, who would start to try and retreat and defend the main land of Austria and Hungary rather than the other divisions. Poland would almost be entirely lost. The German cells would manage to connect themselves, with France having to retreat more and more troops with more fronts to push at. Austria-Hungary would manage to dig thick trenches through Bavaria and Austria and Italy, but meanwhile would start losing its land to the east of it, as they could not hold much longer against the Russian horde who was now turned against them, as well as the reunified German armies. Bavaria would start being marched into by the new German army, as well as the Netherlands, while they try and reconnect to Britain. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the Russians would continuously push and push the Austrian-Hungarians, who couldn't handle. Denmark at this time would surrender, as peace talks would be happening a year earlier, but officially they would surrender. Greece would now start pushing as the Ottomans go to defend their northern border, which the Austrians would claim more land of. Meanwhile, the Austrian Hungarians would continuously start losing more and more land, till the point where they starting to think about surrendering, but the Emperor would keep on pushing for them to fight. Meanwhile, both fronts would be unified. With the nor new northern front unified, they would start pushing down south to take more land from France, though France would hold and abandon its colonies in Africa. Meanwhile, the Iberias would still be in a heavily locked trench warfare, with now Austria also falling to the French and the Russians taking more and more land. Belgium would be completely unified, meanwhile Iberia, Portugal, and Spain would start racking up lots and lots of casualties. <clears throat> so with Belgium now liberated, they would start pushing into France more and more with millions of Belgians signing up to join the fight. Switzerland, France, and Italy would try and hold <clears throat> their lines. 
as long as they can. Meanwhile, Bartharia would try to beg for their independence by the Allies by surrendering. They would accept, so Bartharia would manage to stay independent when the war ends, though the Allies would already start thinking about breaking their promise. Switzerland would now also start being marched into, but the mountainous climate would leave it so they couldn't really attack. The Ottomans would soon capitulate, not having enough resources or manpower to fight the Russians with this open front that they now had. Austria, Hungary, would start to seek allies with France to try and preserve both of their strong, powerful empires, just like how they fought the Prussians in the Franco-Prussian War. This would leave Italy also accepting. Italy would start now being invaded, with half of Switzerland being taken. Meanwhile, in Iberia, Portugal would claim more and more land, while Britain would have all of northern France. Meanwhile, Austria-Hungary would have a thin corner to supply troops and to get supply troops. The Balkans would stay with Austria-Hungary, as it would be better than being ruled by the Ottomans. Italy would try and take the same deal that Bavaria took, with remaining independent if they left and would not allow troops to move through them. This would be accepted, and now more fronts would open up to crush Austria-Hungary, France, and Spain. Armies left in the lower part of Austria would quickly be crushed, and with Austria-Hungary almost collapsing, it would be mainly the Balkans fighting for their independence. Switzerland would be completely surrounded, with only the mountains protecting them. Austria-Hungary would soon see defeat and surrender, and once they would surrender, France would surrender, after Spain had already surrendered earlier that year. More and more people would continuously die as the peace agreements were talked out, though it would overall hurt everyone. There would have to be a number of agreements. Portugal, after being slaughtered by the Spanish troops in the brutal Iberian front, would quickly try and break up Spain so that this huge Iberian war could never happen again. Meanwhile, Germany would want to accept all Germanic people, and Sweden would want to take a lot of land, while Austria-Hungary would need to be broken up, as long with Turkey. Going from west to east, Portugal would gain some puppet states, with Gibraltar expanding and Spain being minorly capitulated with Catalonia, Aragon, and other Spanish states taking power. Brittany would become a British puppet state so that they wouldn't lose men in an invasion of France. Belgium would sort of unify the Benelux with taking most of the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Bavaria, even though they accepted a peace deal to try and surrender to gain their independence, would also be annexed by Germany, as long with Austria and parts of Italy. Meanwhile, Italy would be broken up to Northern Italy, Southern Italy, and the Papal States, with Sicily and Corsica gaining their independence. The Balkans would disunify with Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and Serbia as well as Hungary, would start gaining land, with the Slovak-Poland Union gaining lots of land, and Romania and Bulgaria and Greece gaining their independence from the Ottomans. Meanwhile, Denmark would be left to mainly the main part, and Copenhagen would be taken by Sweden, as long with some of their colonies by Britain, who would gain more colonies in this land. Meanwhile, the Northern Lights would form between Sweden, Denmark, and Norway, with Britain only having their puppet Brittany on their side without an Irish revolution, as most of them would be shipped off to die and not a lot of men would be left to fight. 
Germany would hold the central powers, which would include France, Benelux, and Northern Italy, with the reunificationists of Italy also holding power. With the reunificationists of Italy making up to try and reunify Italy under a strong power, with the Balkan unifiers who would all agree to not let the Russians nor the Ottomans nor the Germans try and take power, with the Iberian unifiers also forming, and Poland and Russia would become close allies. This would leave a semi-cold war, with America looking gone from the distance and remaining isolationist, while Germany and Britain look to fight each other and to destroy. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. I'm thinking about starting another series now that summer's up and can produce more content for you guys. So I do hope you guys like this video. And make sure to subscribe, leave a like, so next subscriber special is at 200. I'm working on this huge project. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy. So have a good one, and goodbye! Wow, what a great video. On the right is my most recent episode. On the left was the first part, in case you didn't watch that. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, as it was such a great video. And you should have a good one. Goodbye!